In today's video, I'm going to showcase a game from the classic and famous 1955 World Championship match between Dr. Marion Tinsley and Walter Hellman. This match is regarded as one of the greatest of all time for many reasons, the biggest reason being that Tinsley is universally considered the best checkers player of all time, and Hellman is considered the second best. So, when these two clashed for the title in 1955, all eyes of the checkers world were upon them. They played 38 games, with Tinsley winning the match and title 3 games to 0 with 35 draws. Every game was a classic, but today I'm going to focus on game 3. I'll play through the game once with no commentary and then play it through again with my analysis and show some instructive points along the way. So let's begin. So here we go. Tinsley is controlling the red pieces and Hellman is controlling the white pieces. And this is the three move ballot. and a draw. All right, I'm sure there are some questions about that game and here now I'm going to play through it again and talk through it with my commentary and analysis. So let's begin. You have the opening ballot, which was again selected for them. And in this opening you would think, well, maybe red has an advantage because it has two center squares and white's off to the side. But actually this opening favors white just a little bit, and that's because eventually red will run out of these center squares and white is going to jockey for position, and we'll, we'll see that as we play it out. So Walter Hellman, of course, makes the uh, correct next best move, which again eliminates red center. So no longer two center squares there, and just the one. And now white can continue to develop towards the center of the board. Now generally speaking, this would be a good move, but in this opening position it's actually inferior because it can't just retake this center square because if that happens, white is just going to take the two for two and actually be up a piece and disrupt red singles corner. So that's actually no good at all. So the best plan of attack here is this move. That way, if it does come to 15 next, this square, at least there'll be a center capture backwards and red, white won't go up a piece. But even so, that's not the best strategy there. White's going to move up. And again, red makes the best move into this square. If red does go here next, White is going to cramp 
red's double corner and eventually red will run out of moves so that's why red goes here instead and now it's just pivoting for center control and white starts that by moving here red develops this piece next white goes here and now the two for two exchange And now just natural moves for red here, developing the single corner. White now has two of these center control squares. Red moves up here. White goes here next, and then red goes here next. This is a classic landing in this opening. Now, as you can see, white has two center control squares and red has one. So white doesn't want to disrupt this. Instead, it'll look at developing its back row, and really there isn't a bad move white can make here. This is a good move, this is a good move, um, and this is a good move, but Hellman chooses this move, which is probably the best and probably the most restrictive. Um, either this or or this. Um, if, if white goes here next, then red can just move and exchange there. Uh, but white goes here, and now red is going to eliminate one of these two center squares, and it does that by moving here. And now white is going to set just a little trap. It's, it's just a little trap because it is a drawable move uh, for both sides, but a place here. And now red is forced to take this square. Anything else, and white is just going to cramp the double corner, and red will probably run out of moves, so it must go here. Now, instead of backing it here, which again is fine, inferior, white will delay by moving here. This is a really good and instructive piece. When there's a forced capture, you have an extra move to make, and sometimes you can spring a trap that way. So, White moves here next. Red captures this square. And now white is going to go in and attack this lone piece with no protection. So how does red defend this? Well, it defends it pretty cleverly. It moves here next. White can take the single capture and then red will take it back. White will take it back, but it really makes it for an easy time uh, for either side. So instead, White is going to put a little bit more pressure on red by moving here and then taking this capture. Now, white has to move this piece for red to capture back. And now, really, a race to the finish line, and each move is so critical here for timing purposes. There's some vulnerability here with red. So again, the timing must work out just right, and it just does. Red goes here next. White goes towards the king. And now developing this piece with the idea of eliminating this white piece and getting a king. White gets crowned. Red moves here. White starts to move out, and again the exchange. White moves here, and again this piece is getting close to being in immediate danger. So red must start developing this piece to protect this piece from the king. So white stops that initially by developing this piece. Red gets a king here. White is getting closer to attacking this piece. Red is going to develop here. Now, the white king cannot move here and attack this piece because then red is just going to move there. The king will jump and then you'll have a double jump, so that's no good. So instead, 
really the best move for white now is just to move towards safety. Red will develop this piece, and the game is a draw. When looking at the 1955 match in its entirety, you could call every game a classic, and you would be right. Game 3, as I just showed you, isn't the most famous, but it delivers many key instructive points, such as this position. And I hope you can then use these types of positions in your own games. I'll be posting more classic games from famous players from time to time, so please stay tuned for that. Thanks, as always, for watching.